Hey, John here from John's Do Yourself. I've built a lot of shadow boxes with jerseys or jackets in them, and I always get asked after I post the video how I mounted the jackets or how I prepped them or the coins or the other objects to the display board. So what I thought I'd do is I'd actually reverse this video and we'll start with the display board already built and mounting the actual contents to it. And then we'll roll into building the rest of the shadow box. So let's get cutting. One thing I always stress is that you don't actually need to use your jacket that you wore during your service time. Actually, you are better off using the smallest jacket you can find. So let's start by laying your jacket out flat on a table. Fold the left side of the jacket over and align your arm. The right side of the jacket should be stretched out and remain out of the way. Now with everything perfectly in half, start at the collar. You're going to allow about two inches to be tucked behind the top of the collar. So two inches from your fold, cut the collar. Now unfold your jacket and at the bottom of the jacket, straight below the cut on the collar, cut a straight line up to the collar. If done right, you should have no more than six inches of jacket when folded over and flipped back over. Straighten everything out and at this point your jacket should look really flat once it's all squared away. Now cut off the elastic choker clip so it does not protrude from the collar while laying flat. Next take a straight pin and pin the two inch excess of the collar to the underside of the top collar so it stays flat and directly behind the rest of the collar. It's important to make sure the red line doesn't show. If the red line shows it will be a distractor so make sure it's pinned behind the rest of the collar perfectly. Now flip over the jacket and ensure to smooth it out perfectly. Take some masking tape and tape down the six inch excess. This is important because when we go to mount it, it will keep the flapping part from bunching up when you move your jacket around. And then when you attach it to the display board, it'll be noticeable if you have anything bunched up. Go ahead and tape it from the base all the way up to the collar and go ahead and give those pins, those straight pins, some extra support by taping it there as well. That's how you do a dress jacket. Now for the battle dress uniform, otherwise known as the BDU, it's a slight difference. The first step is to fold the shirt directly in half by aligning the plackets. If you didn't know the area of your shirt that has the buttons and the button slots is the plackets. The objective here is to make the blouse folded perfectly in half. Now remember, if you are only doing a BDU blouse by itself, you might want to do the opposite side. But since this one is going to be facing the dress jacket, I am doing the reverse side. Cut along the fold until you get near the collar. Then flip over and again, give yourself about a two inch overlap near the collar. Flip the blouse over and flatten out. From the seam directly under the arm, fold over the cut portion to the center of the blouse and smooth everything out. Just like you did with the dress jacket, tape down the excess portion that you just cut. This time, stop short of the collar. We will need to do a little more finagling to get the collar to align. Fold the arm over and into place. Then roll your collar forward so it's at an angle. This is not natural to the material, but if you let the natural fold take place, the blouse will not look right once complete. So you're going to create the angle that looks like a regular shirt collar. Or, if with another jacket, ensure that the angle of the collar matches the opposing jacket. So in this situation, I made it match the angle of the dress jacket. We are going to use the rank to hold the collar tip in position when we attach it to the display board. So in order to make it lie flat, you will need to remove the first button directly below the collar. Next we are going to prep the belt and the buckle. Take your buckle and a pair of needle nose pliers and bend out the hook portion of the buckle. Take a firm grip of the buckle and clamp down with the pliers. Don't try to pull or yank it straight off. Just wiggle the clip back and forth. Eventually the clip will fall off. You don't need all the belt, only about eight inches. Cut enough to go under the buckle and stretch out under the arm sleeve to reach the first belt loop that should be directly under the sleeve. Once you have that cut, take some duct tape and cut a small piece that will fit directly under the buckle without showing outside. 
Then, with some standard Elmer's glue, place some glue directly on the buckle, and then place the belt in it, and then secure the belt to the buckle with the duct tape you just cut. Just to ensure good contact, I place a small clamp on it for a bit. Since I am not ready to attach the jacket to the display board, I will use another display to show you how I attach the belt to the jacket and the buckle to the display board. First make sure your last button or the button that would be under the buckle is removed. Then lay down a healthy coat of Elmer's glue. Slide your belt into the belt loop and position the belt in place with the buckle clasp being at the edge of the jacket. Take a knife and cut a small slit beneath the buckle clasp. Fill that slip in with Elmer's glue and then press the clasp firmly into the glue. If you feel you have used too much glue, simply dab it away with a paper towel. The beauty of Elmer's glue is that when it dries, it's almost invisible. Okay, you have probably seen some of my flag techniques in many of my other videos. But while I let that glue dry on the buckle, I will walk you step by step through the folding of a flag. Remember, all custom shadow boxes start with knowing how thick the flag is when folded. A custom shadow box is literally built around the flag. Start by folding your flag long ways in thirds. Fold it so that you have one end displaying the blue field of stars. Take a thin, flat object. I use plexiglass because it helps that you can see through it when you're trying to align your stars. Make sure your piece has a 90 degree angle. That is, unless your flag is not in the corner of the box and your frame has 122.5 degree angle. Once your piece is cut, unfurl your flag so you can place your piece behind the first layer of stars. Once you have your stars aligned, tape the piece into place so it will not slide around when you go to fold your flag back into shape. I have found it is easier to place your thin piece into the box first and then fold into place. You can attempt to fold the flag outside the box and then place it in, but this is usually hit or miss and it can become frustrating. So just place it in the box and fold the flag into the space provided. I use a little bit of duct tape to hold the flag in place until I can get the back plate on. Okay, now to place the jackets on the display board. I actually talked the owner of this box into allowing me to fold the bottom of the jackets so I could make the box smaller. These are large jackets and I felt that the box would just become too unruly if we had it 48 inches by 38 inches. So in order to get it down to 30 inches by 40 inches, I had to recommend folding the bottoms of the blouse and jacket. Most people will not even notice when looking at the finished product, but attaching the jacket is the same as if they're folded or not. Once your jacket is fully dressed, you can flip it over. This should not be an issue if you have everything taped down like we did earlier. You can apply your glue. Here I use Elmer's glue, but wood glue will work here just as well. With fabric, any basic glue will work to adhere to the fibers. For the blouse, it is a bit thinner, so instead of chancing and having any glue drip off when you flip it over, simply lift the bottom, apply your glue, and then fold back into place. Then fold down the top and repeat the process. To hold the edges of the light material, you can use straight pins to keep the blouse perfectly in place. The rest of the box is just push and set. If you have any Velcro patches, they are good to go with sticking to the felt. For items in a series, make sure you use a guide to help with spacing. Here I use a simple scrap piece of wood to ensure all the ranks are at equal distances. When it comes to coins, well, I actually have a whole video on mounting those. I will have a link at the end of this video if you're still interested. Any other objects that need to be attached, you can simply use straight pins or Elmer's glue, and that's the beauty of the style of my display boards. When it comes to synthetic flags, I actually do fold these up outside the box because they're really thin and easy to work with. The process is exactly the same as with the ensign. Start by creating a flat piece that will be snug into the corner and will make the flag look great up against the glass. Overall, this ensures a perfect fit in the box. 
Your last step is to roll for lint and dust, then secure the display board with the jackets into the box, and then you're ready for display. As always, thanks for watching, and if this video helped you prep your jacket, hit that thumbs up button and shoot me a pic of it on Facebook. I would love to see how your projects turn out. While you're here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get on to making this box.